Yeah, I think that I'm actually, I'm maybe one of your patients and that, that you've like actually bought me all this equipment <laughs> <laughs> and to get the real store. That we didn't like get any of the equipment from all the places I thought we got it from and all the money we gained and you're actually this has all been funded by, by the HSC to make me feel like <laughs> to make me feel okay. Thanks to the HSC. <laughs> the HSC oh, have sponsored this podcast. <laughs> so Kieran, there is not the amount of equipment and fucking money in the HSC to make you feel all right. I'm telling oh. you. So <laughs> <laughs> not in a bad way. Oh, okay. In, in a nice way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel a bit bad now. Sorry, man. No, thanks to the agency for. <laughs> there's no one even watching it. You, YouTube, YouTube are putting on fake views to make me feel okay. <laughs> there's yeah. like, like literally YouTube and agency yeah. are working together and they're paying everyone. To make Do you know? <laughs> did you ever see the Truman Show? recording and yeah so we can do a med uh do you want to do the angelas what do i have to do just listen just me- close your eyes for a minute and like you know this doesn't have to go into the video but just close your eyes for a minute and it's like news at 10 for me it's but like that's big ben and news at 10 oh come on don't that's not the big ben it's the angelas <laughs> <laughs> big ben. it's not the big ben it's mary <laughs> Big no, Ben. It's not, it's Mary. I know Mary. The Big Ben. That's what she sounds like. Big Ben. Welcome to News at 10. Six. On the BBC. Angela's is a six o'clock experience. Nearly over. <laughs> it's, a fo- it's, a, it's a minute of meditation. A minute. To gather yourself. Remind yourself that. Gather, I feel like I'm fucking unraveling. Well, let's go on. Never mind gathering. The sun might be setting, but you know, it'll rise again another day. The sun's fucking setting on my soul. <laughs> I'm <gonna> fucking <laughs> sit here. It's, in the, it's a. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, thank God. Jesus Christ. Clap, clap, I'll just say clap, clap, <laughs> we don't have our chopboard, so we'll say clap, chopping board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, welcome back to Everything From Not In Ireland's Greatest Situation, and uh, that's a fact. And we're here now, live in this makeshift studio that we just set up there in the last couple of hours, uh, not hours, couple of hours. And, um, yeah, if you, uh, oh, I need to, see, now this might be a bit weird, because I have to cut to our guest and to myself while we're, while talking, so it might be a bit weird, but I'll get it, and I'll have, like, some sort of, f- like, my, my magic fiddling fingers will, <laughs> will switch, like, back and forth, and it'll be okay, you just have to give it a minute. Uh, anyway, I if have, you. I have faith in you. Thanks. That's our guest having faith in me. We'll introduce a guest now in a minute, a uh, faithful guest, that is. Um, but yeah, if you, if the video, if I, if I end up like making loads of, sorry, now I'm just going to drink a sip of my tea. <sighs> if I end up making like mistakes or whatever, like when I'm uh, switching or whatever, and it gets a nine, I don't know, never done it before, but if it does, then you can listen to it, this uh, on the audio only version anyway. On Spotify, just search everything from that, and um, Spotify is uh, recommending us to people and stuff. And we have our, <laughs> most of our listeners on Spotify are in Belgium, and I uh, don't know what that's about. If anyone that watches this is from Belgium, uh, I'd love to know what that's about. It's uh, interesting indeed. Anyway, uh, yeah, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching it as well, like just because it helps uh, YouTube promoters or whatever. 
Well, who cares? If you want to, you don't have to. Uh, today's guest, anyway, is someone who has been on the show before a few times now and is a, a consistent guest. Like, is a, you know, is not a guest. Has been a. She's a she's a co-host. She's a, and she's part of like everything we're doing with Crohig, and she's part of everything from now and then. Everything we're doing, and uh, she's a friend. She's a friend of the of the of the, fa- the family, uh, the Krohig family. Krohig, Krohig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The mushrooms for breakfast. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, today's guest is Dr. Haley Wood. She's a she's a yeah, she's a doctor who's involved with Crohig and everything we're doing. And, um, yeah, so, I don't know, I'm going to talk about, like, you getting into medicals. Like, ev- like when did you become a doctor? Like, what inspired you to be a doctor? Mm, I, like, I always wanted to be from when I was a little kid, randomly. Um, I, wo- oh. I, was, I saw a split brain operation um, when I was... I don't know about four or five or something in my grandma's house. Yeah. Um, because she would let us stay up till crazy hours watching an inappropriate shit that's on right. the TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, I remember thinking then, like, wow, that's that's something that I would really love to do. That's so random. One day, and then kind of, I think it sort of came and went, and you know, I it crossed my mind multiple times, and then yeah, when I was eighteen, it I didn't didn't happen for a number of reasons and I met somebody on um on a boat that sounds really cryptic I met somebody <laughs> in a boat in Dusseldorf <laughs> who is Dusseldorf <laughs> that's not that's Germany oh, uh, wait what was yeah. the name of the town the Grinch was in I have no idea. I okay, it's know. probably not Dusseldorf. No, go on anyway. You met you it's were a on a boat for Dusseldorf. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Dusseldorf. Um, or wait, no. Jim Carrey was the Grinch. Hey, what was um? Yes, yeah, so you're on a boat in Dusseldorf. Yeah, and uh, I had a conversation with somebody who had um gone to medical school like later in life. Like I was twenty nine then, um, and I was loaded full of vodka, and I thought this that would be like a really good idea <laughs> at twenty nine to take myself off to medical school, and um. Yeah, I then I I applied. I didn't really think I'd get in, um. But like I was, I was cleaning toilets for a living at the time and cooking in a pub. Yeah. Um. Wait, just so like you don't go like I just so I don't want to like pull back too far when we go ahead. So you were saying your inspiration for joining med school was none other than the amazing Crystal Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I it probably had a role to play, yeah, because I, you know, you get, you feel like you're on a boat in Dusseldorf, full of. You're on a boat in Dusseldorf. Vodka, and you sort of think you can do anything by that point. <laughs> yeah, you would be if you're on a boat in Dusseldorf. Maybe so. Yeah. The fact, that that the fact that there's even boats in Dusseldorf. I see. Is Dusseldorf a big place? I don't know. I'm just saying. Big enough. Like it's a cool town. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um. So yeah, then I I applied and I like I. I didn't think I'd get in. I I wasn't convinced I'd get in. And I did. And yeah, then I was like, shit, I have to go to medical school now. And that's like five years, five years of my life. Um, And and so where was the medical school? Like what? uh, St. George's. Shout out to St. George's in South London. Yeah. Shout out to St. George's. (laughs) South London. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I did my, my... Five years there. That's mad. And then, yeah, went off into internship. And what was, like, how many internship, like, what does that consist of? Is that, like, a few years? Is so it in the hospital connected to the college or something? Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's basically sort of, like, either one or two years of, of compulsory training that you have to do after medical school to get your full registration. Yeah. So you qualify, you get um, a degree in medicine, which is like that's your five years, so that's like a bachelor of medicine, um, and then um, you do time in the hospital for another year or two, depending on kind of like which country you're in, and um, yeah, you rotate through whatever kind of specialties are on your roster, and um, 
then you can get full registration like with the medical council and then you're kind of like able to practice and to go on to further training and stuff okay and what did you do did you do for like what was your next step after you did that so once you've done your internship this is like i took the unusual decision you normally follow on with internship in your your country because it's part of your training so it falls under your medical school but i um went to south africa um because i'd done an elective as part of my time in medical school you you can go off somewhere in the world and do electives so you get space yeah. and time um in term to do that so i did one in the states in boston and then i did another one in south africa okay um what part of south africa was it in? it was in a place called port shepstone um, she- that's definitely the place where the grinch is from <laughs> port she- what? didn't see him <laughs> okay <laughs> where are you looking no. did you okay was it does it snow there in Port Shepston? No, no, I, not What's as far co- as I, Port Shepston. It's over in Kuzuli Natal, so it's over the east side, so it'd be okay. pretty warm there. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if it snows. I was, I was there for a couple of months, that's all there. Okay, all oh, right. So when you when you first went there, you went there for a few months then? Yeah, so I went there like in medical school for a couple of months, and then I'd, I'd gotten really interested in like kind of surgery and trauma, and I had decided that I wanted to go and work in... Um, like war zones and stuff for like medicine some frontier and organizations like that and yeah south africa is a really good place to train and trauma you know there's high levels of violence and stuff like that there so um yeah. and i i thought the training was really good like there were people really early on in their training who were really fucking good at what they did yeah um and it just, sorry go on sorry it just on. like it just seemed a lot more practical in terms of the training and a lot less kind of tick box and you know just formulaic and i yeah and like is it co- is it like common that like i'm gonna guess i'm gonna answer and say no correct me if i'm wrong that like <laughs> most doctors do all their training and they say they go look for places that are as you said uh high in trauma and uh violence like is it common for a doctor to be like i've done medical school now where's the most <laughs> violent place <laughs> there is <laughs> probably not that it's not i mean there, there are a few people that do it but i uh, yeah, I think we'd be the minority. You would be the minority. <laughs> I don't think we like. I don't think there's that many. Like, I don't even think there's enough further to be like a we. <laughs> like, it's like you and maybe him across the road or something <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> I the thing is, like, I travelled quite a lot. Like, because I went to medical school later, I'd already travelled and done different things overseas. So I think like that was a little bit of my motivation for going to medical school was. I can pick this up and move it around the world. Like this is a thing I can do all over the place. And, yeah. you know, it felt like a, a secure kind of interesting, um, I don't know, like a, like there's, because there's so much opportunity for ongoing training and learning and experience and stuff, I I got a bit sick of traveling and kind of like doing bar work and like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I did loads of stuff while I was overseas, but like it just, it, none of it felt like it was kind of like robust yeah stuff so i i felt like yeah it had been on the back of my mind like i'd done further study after like being away earlier on in life and and like medicine had sort of been in the back of my mind on and off yeah yeah but it was something that i felt like i i did i really want to put myself through that as i got a bit older and i wasn't sure that i would want to make that commitment but yeah i mean i don't know i guess if it's for you it'll kind of find you eventually anyway yeah like yeah, definitely. And did you find like yeah, cause, like cause, yeah, like you didn't go to college when, for it when you were like, well, wh- wait, no, wait, what? You did you say eighteen? When you, you were on the boat when you were eighteen? No, I was on the boat when I was oh, twenty nine. Oh right, I don't know why I got confused. I was on that you particular said, boat when I was twenty nine. Okay, right. <laughs> 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 I was like, um, but yeah, so like, was it um, was that like the um, was that like the main thing like holding you back thinking like oh you didn't go to fucking college when you were eighteen so like oh I did I did go to college when I was eighteen but well, I, I mean like sorry sorry yeah but okay go on but my, my medical school like you didn't yeah like I d- like did it feel like oh it was too late or some shit like? it felt like it was just a lot to take on because it's not like I uh, I'm one of those weirdos that like I really like studying and learning and I kind of feel a bit weird when I don't have that stuff in my life. Yeah, you're junk you're junkie for the textbook. Yeah, and I'd always worked and studied from when I was in school, so I'd always had jobs and stuff as well. So I just kind of carried on that pattern. Yeah. Um so I don't know, it just it felt like 
a lot of years if it had been a couple of years I think I would have been like yeah 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 it's something I really want to do but the amount of years and I knew that I couldn't work through all of it so I knew I was going to have to borrow money and shit like that and that I don't know I'd sort of gotten by without doing that yeah until that point so it's a yeah I don't know it felt like yeah a lot but I think once it was sort of in my head and th- then I yeah I couldn't stop it okay yeah and so like yeah back to Rochel Rochel Schmochel Robin Robin Hergen what was the name of the place? Dusseldorf. No, in Sa- in South Africa. <laughs> Port Shepston. Port Shepston. Oh I'm not trying to, I just, I don't like, no, like some, hey, people can't pronounce Crohig, so like I can't yeah, pronounce I like a I name. Know. There's less syllables in Crohig than there is in Port, Port Shepston. Ho- yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, I um, was going to say like, yeah, so like what, what, what was your like pat when it was in South Africa when it came to like based on medicine and stuff? So, so like, I, d- I did that elective in my last year of medical school and then I came back and I was still in medical school so I had to sit like final exams and do all of that and then like it was a couple of days after I got back from South Africa like because it's in the southern hemisphere it'd been all sunny and warm and lovely and or well not lovely like you know trauma and hospital stuff yeah but like but like it's like uh, this you know now like yeah it's there's something a bit nicer about dealing with like as torn off leg when it's a bit sunny out. yeah and the sunshine with palm trees you know it didn't yeah. feel and then i came back to to london in it was actually on the 10th of december i remember and it was lashing down rain and freezing and i think i was doing a surgery rotation so i was up at like what year, what year was that then uh it would have been um when did i go away 2003 so it would have been yeah Two no two thousand. I started medical school in two thousand three, so it would have been two thousand and seven. Okay. So yeah, it would have been December two thousand and seven, um, and yeah, it was just it was just cold and horrible and dark, and I it was just I I found like the just quite a lot of restrictions in within the training and stuff, um, in this part of the world, and I just felt like I wanted to go. Back, so that was when I I applied for internship in South Africa. Okay. And they didn't really know what to do with me through that process because, like, it's not people didn't do that, you know. So, but I think that was, you know, part of the reason why I was able to do it because they just kind of didn't really know what to do. So they just went okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to get That's like paperwork and you know. It reminds me of like my friend, like uh, I say his name, but. Who like went over to uh, is it somewhat similar to like when he when he went over to uh, Vietnam and like you know he found the old spray paint and he uh, yeah started doing a bit of the old spray paint over in uh, Vietnam but they just don't know what it is like and you know people were looking at him like as if he was doing some sort of alien thing but because he didn't know what he did like they didn't know if it was bad or good like and you know it's just like there's no like laws or regulations around it because it's not really been done before it's similar yeah, yeah. to that like. Well, I, I mean, there'd be a few more <laughs> rules and regulations or that kind of thing, but, like, no one had... People go there after internship, you know, yeah. they complete that internship and then go, but, like, yeah, I think they, they didn't... You could sit, tell that they were just like, what? And they didn't really know how to put that paperwork in place and stuff, so I think mm-hmm. it kind of... It's, it works. It's not, I, you know, I didn't I can go over there and illegally practice <laughs> residence. It's all <laughs> really dodgy. You know? <laughs> that wasn't no, what like I did. That, that's what I meant. I meant just like around the like sort of characteristics. Not, the, oh, I don't know, like that. Yeah, it wasn't illegal. I, I, just do, I felt like they didn't really <laughs> have a system for it. Do that's you know what, what I mean. mean though, like, like, yeah, what yeah, he wasn't yeah, doing yeah. wasn't illegal yeah. either, but like, yeah. Um, but like, there just wasn't like, it was just like you nearly you nearly get away with more because that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like you get like away with more because they, they hadn't sort of invented restrictions for it yet. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like as yeah. in they they didn't have a reason to tell me no. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's what I, that's kind of what I was getting at. I so wasn't comparing like the amputation of a leg to the spray painting in Vietnam. Yeah, but like it, whatever. Who knows? <laughs> I, sorry. <laughs> You just crapped on the entire medical profession in South Africa. Or I have upgraded upgraded spray spray painting in Vietnam. Yeah. Well, I I think people, whatever, (laughs) this is not a podcast about spray painting, but it's not that bad. Anyway. (laughs) 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 So so you you, you got the internship in South Africa? Yeah, yeah. So I went there in October 2008, and that was for two years. So you 
one of the really appealing things about doing it there had been like you rotate through every medical specialty for two years. Yeah. So, like that's the thing is like that that I think people don't realize in medicine is not just like you go through medical school and then you're a doctor who can do anything. Like there's yeah. years of further training. So you do internship, which is a year in um, Ireland and the UK, and it's a couple of years in South Africa, and you rotate through everything. So things like pediatrics, like kidney medicine, and obstetrics and gynecology, and surgery, and anaesthetics, and orthopedics. You go through everything. Yeah. So you have like a really solid training. Okay. Um, and yeah, I did that, and I was in um, close to Durban in a township um, just outside of Durban. Um, and yeah, I did that for a couple of years. Yeah. And how, what, what, like, how long were you in South Africa? And then like, when, when did you leave? So I, I was there from October 2008 until January 2014. Okay. And why did you, like, why, what happened that you left? A few things, I suppose, but like, I, um, I ended up adopting um, my daughter there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is always even harder to explain than it is. Like, it's a lot harder to explain than it is in existence in my head. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, so, yeah, the, when I was doing my pediatrics, so, like, um, you know, children's medicine in as an intern, um, my first day on that rotation, there was um, a kid had come in overnight and... Um, She's 14 months old and yeah. she was really, really sick. She still is like the sickest human being I've ever seen. And um, she got loads of things going on and she was, mm, I don't want to go too much into her story, but like, yeah, yeah, she ended up with us for two and a half months with all kinds of different um, physical problems and stuff um she crashed a couple of times so he had to like revive her and resuscitate her and all of that and um the it's it's really common in not really common but i mean it's common enough in south africa that, uh, that kids would get um i don't really want to say abandoned because it, i don't think that's fair it's not always to the case. yeah no i mean there's a lot it's of hurting. difficulties and challenges that people face in south africa that we just we're not yeah, fa- at all yeah. familiar with here. So, you know, I don't think it's a case of people willfully dumping kids. I just, it's not like that at all. Yeah. There's um, way more things at play. Like, as in, yeah. It's, there's less excuses to do it here. Yeah. And, like, you know, I think ultimately, like, y- it c- it's a really fucking brave thing for a lot of people to, to leave their kid in a better place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah, an easy thing to do. But if, if, if you are, if you become aware that you can't, maintain your kid and yourself and whatever other family you've got you know you might have other kids and stuff like that and you might have limited supports and you know there isn't social welfare in the same way that there is in our part of the world you know it's it's i think it you know it can be a really fucking brave choice to it's, uh, it's definitely like something that like yeah that like often like the ego like you know that sort of like thing would prevent you know that there people like it's it's a hard thing to, it's like a humbling and it's like a hard thing to do because you're sorry like to say that you can't do it and accept that like and that's a it's like for people that it's that's the case like that's absolutely like i don't know i think there's yeah respect there like yeah it's just not you know we have the the kind of view that like oh you know everybody who does that is like they're not taking responsibility you know they're not trying and it's just like that's crazy yeah it's never everything is a lot more complicated than that in real life and you know no it's not and i take my fucking hat off to people that you know, can can find it within themselves to make that choice on behalf of their kids. Yeah, when it's co- when it's coming from like that sort of like good play, like yeah, like there's always gonna be difference. Like there's always yeah. gonna be, it's a case by case. Like yeah, yeah, times where it's like people just don't give a fuck, but and but they're, it's not always like that, and I think mm-hmm. it's often perceived as that. But like there's genuine genuine times where it's harder for them to do that than it is easier. Like yeah, and I think. You know, when when there's health issues and stuff like that, then, you know, it's to admit that maybe that's something beyond what you're able to handle. Yeah, yeah. You know, and to give your kid the best chance and the best quality of of life. But, you know, I mean, yeah, her 
she ended up in the hospital, um, you know, without family. Yeah. Um, and then she went on, she still wasn't that well, she went on to um, a place of safety, so effectively an orphanage. Um, and it was quite close to my house. And um, because she'd been my patient for, like, all that time. Yeah. Um, on the ward and, you know, she just kept on surviving. When we didn't, I couldn't, none of us could believe it. Um, and I, I, that kind of raises, I don't know, when she went off to, she went off to the place of safety and, and some of her medical records, like vaccination stuff, and that was left on the ward and it was quite close to my house. So I, t- I took the stuff there and then you see, like you, you see the kids home in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's something that you, you know. I don't know, you know, I wasn't really prepared for something like that. And, yeah, you kind of see things that sort of make you think a little bit. And, you know, and I I left all the documentation there. I left my phone number and stuff. And then about a month later, I had a phone call at about 8 o'clock on a Sunday night from the kids' home um, saying that she wasn't well again. Um, and she was kind of floppy and poorly responsive and stuff, which isn't a good sign. Yeah. Um. And I ended up going there. They didn't really have... You, you just can't access ambulances and transport and, like, support in that transport in the same way that you could here. So um, I ended up driving there and picking her up and taking her to the hospital um, on a very rare weekend off for myself. And then I... Yeah, she was with us again for about another six weeks. I moved on from paediatrics and I was in a different rotation, but, like... I don't know, like, I just, like, you can't, there's stuff that you can't unsee and can't unknow. Yeah. And I think I just started to join the dots up a little bit in my head about kind of how things play out for these kids. And, you know, when they're in places like that, and not that, not, you know, they do the best that they can, but it's just not, it's not really a quality of life. Yeah. Um, And... I felt like we'd sort of, as like a healthcare team, we kind of, I suppose, patted ourselves on the back a bit and, and sort of said, yeah, you know, this kid survived. Look what we're doing to so keep this kid alive. And actually... Well, it's just like, yeah, then what? Like Yeah, and, I, you know, when you see the kids home and you kind of see the scale of, of it and, like, the, the issues of, like, kids without homes, I, I don't know, like, you... It didn't sit right with me because you kind of question whether she is better off alive. Like, what right did we really have if that's going to yeah. be her life? And I don't know. I just I had a bit of a dilemma around it all. I didn't feel very good about myself. Yeah. Um. And yeah, that sort of sat with me. And yeah, yeah, it was a weird one. Yeah, and so like what? So like. What happened, like, when was, like, the moment, like, where you knew that, like, I don't know, like, what happened when it come to, like, you know, because she was, like, your kid, like, was uh, a patient and stuff for a while, but when was, like, yeah, when was, like, the changeover, what was the process of, like, that, like, her becoming your patient in the hospital to, like, your kid who now lives with you? Um, yeah, still sounds weird. Um, I don't know. I mean, I carried on visiting her after she'd been in the hospital the second time. I carried on visiting her, like, on weekends off in the kids' home and stuff like that. And it then I finished internship and I started to kind of wonder about, you know, maybe moving somewhere out of South Africa. Like, the violence can sort of get to you a little bit and it can be yeah. a little bit... I don't know. I, I think I probably just need a bit of time out of there anyway, but, like... Yeah, I started to think about what to do after that, and um, like we, after you adopted her. No, you? like after internship, oh. and you know, I I was considering kind of what maybe specialty of medicine I wanted to go into, and I got a, a offered a job in anaesthetics. Okay. Um, and I started to do that, and then I wanted to move out of Durban anyway. Like there was better training options in anaesthetics, so then I kind of wondered what the hell I would do about this kid in the kids' home. Um. Because I didn't feel right to leave, and but having a kid wasn't anything that I ever wanted to do. Yeah. Ever. 
and uh, and like knowing you as well like i can clarify <laughs> and like as people will get to know you on the podcast like because you're gonna be on like a lot of, you're gonna see it other times a Haley as well so um many times in the future and you'll get to know that like yeah she's like the last person you would expect to have a kid <laughs> which is funny um so yeah um yeah, so I was, you know, it's sort of, well, if, like, if I don't leave her here, then what? And that yeah. was then, like, fuck, well, then, then what? So I mentioned it to one of the social workers in the kids' home one day, and I said, you know, I was thinking of moving to another city to, to place Peter Maritzburg about an hour outside of Durban. And um, I said, you know, I made some sort of flippant remark about foster care or adoption or something, and, and she sort of almost laughed at me and said, well, no one's going to give you that Wait, child. who is she, sorry? The, the per- social worker in okay. the kids' home. Yeah. And she kind of said, no, no one's going to give you that child. And I just g- give you that child, like it, like the yeah. possessions or like, and what? So and it's, it's like... Well, cheaper or something. Like yeah, just and it just, you know, like, okay, first of all, why wouldn't someone give you the child when you're offering a home and a future and stability? Is that not what their job? Is that not what the whole children's home is for? Like, why... W- I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, like, what was the purpose of the children's home if they weren't, like... So, I mean, it's just like state care, really. But, like, there's a lot of racial issues around um, white people adopting um, non-white kids or, like, non, non-black non people adopting black kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, South Africa is still very racially divided, really. Yeah. In terms of sort of practice every day. And um, in the Zulu culture, so the the part of South Africa where I was is kind of, it's predominantly Zulu. Um, It's not really part of their culture to to support adoption. um, Yeah. Because it's just kids are cared for sort of within families and communities, but that's doesn't doesn't really work in practice now yeah yeah um so there is still sort of division and you can see where the history comes from you know it's like you know we sort of took i mean yeah i'm not getting into that but like yeah so there is it's not the easiest thing in the world to do to be you know a non-black foreigner trying to adopt you know a, a local child as it were um so the system although the constitution is very good the children's act in south africa is very good in practice it doesn't it just doesn't work like that yeah um so there was there was that comment that the social worker made that sort of made me think well why not yeah like that doesn't seem fair (laughs) um and then there was another time when I made a comment about like the amount of kids that there were there and sort of kids with difficulties and, and that. And um, she said to me, oh, nobody expects anything of these children, Haley. That is just quite a thing. What, sorry, what's her sentence? That's mad. Yeah, and that, I, I, that just kind of fucking quietly blew my mind and I couldn't... I mean, she, you know, she was nice person like a reasonable yeah. social worker as far as i could tell i mean i didn't deal firsthand with her really she was just the, the social worker in the kids home but like i but it's like her experience too and it's probably yeah i mean she was her. probably just being honest yeah you know having been in the system for a lot of years and like well, i'd say that's s- being honest from her experience mm. i don't think that's honestly i don't think that's the sort of like cosmic truth and like none of these people have a child i think in her experience she might have been honest, but I don't think you can ever be honest on behalf of the world of like what's factual. Because if that was true, well then why is your kid like perfectly fine and happy? Like, and if yeah. do you know what I mean, so she wasn't being uh, she was only being honest from her experience. Yeah, and sort of I guess that yeah, the reality of the situation there, you know. Yeah. So um. But but what what I'm saying is like it's still like just funny. It's like the f- it did did. You like I don't know like you did you did it it's it's so it's possible like it's yeah. possible to happen to now any other kid like I'm not sure what the story is with the homes over there now like and it's probably been a while since you've been there but but that's still possible like someone else could come in and do that like yeah and, like yeah so like to say that they don't have any chances is mad like it's yeah and it I don't know it just sort of made me it clicked something in my head like for sure and but then it was 
I'd sort of gone to South Africa so I could get, so I could, you know, eventually work in war zones and do all of that and move around yeah. and travel and kind of like, that was the sort of life that I wanted. Yeah, your usual uh, <laughs> desires, some <laughs> war-torn areas. Yeah. You know, what you what, I, not in better than like, I've always like desired to, I used to want to go and live in the woods in Alaska, but then I thought, what if I could go and march over the sand to pick up someone's leg in hope <laughs> that I don't get blown up by a bouncing <laughs> Betty? <laughs> Usual textbook desires. Uh, yeah, I swear, you know, it's not for everyone, I think. <laughs> 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 but, you know, that was, I, it was really a lot of my motivation was sort of going to medical school, I think. <laughs> and certainly as the years went on in medical school, yeah, that was the thing that I, I sort of felt driven or motivated yeah. towards. So, it's, it's a bit uh, weird, like I could see why though as well. I don't think, yeah, you well. know, yeah, it's got it's got its one side. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then when I started to think about, like, I mean, just yeah, like the whole kind of thing of having a kid, I just never, never wanted it. And to think about doing that then, and sort of like, you know, letting go of your dreams and that to to a big extent. I mean, you can't, you couldn't do that if you had a kid and you're just you. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no support or anything, so. That took me a while to sort of get my head around. Yeah. Just, yeah. I suppose just and it's where else do you take your life when that had been something that you're working for for a number of years and all yeah. the kind of restrictions and shit. You know, I'm not, I'm kind of selfish. Like, I don't really, I don't really like, I didn't, you know, it's kind of annoying to start giving a fuck about other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And looking after somebody else. It was, you know, some days it was hard enough to look after myself. Yeah. Um, and so that took a little while to get my head around, but I think it was, uh, I, you know, it was just, it was already set then. Like, it sounds like a weird thing to say, but I think it was sort of already set in stone. There wasn't really much I could do about it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Wh why was it set in stone? Like, what? It always sounds like a really weird thing to say, but, like, I didn't... There was something weird about like the first time I met her where it was and everyone always wants to kind of do that whole thing of like, oh, yeah, but you just suddenly decided you want to be a mom because you are female and like you just there was some yearning void inside of you, and, <laughs> you know, and, and then you met this child and you just fell in love with her and it just turns out and it's not fucking it wasn't like that. And that's a really difficult thing to get across to people. Yeah. You know, I just. I don't know, it feels like it was just a a thing that kind of was going to be in this lifetime. And, like, she... There's no way that she's not my kid. Yeah. Just... And and I think a lot of people who adopt will say that. But didn't she... Didn't, did she... I think you told me a story before. Didn't she, like, recognise you? Yeah, there was a weird... She... Yeah, she would look at me on the first day of the ward where she would and just... And she was how old again, sorry? Like 14 months. Yeah. And it was, like... It was honestly as though she was sort of looking through into my soul and it would make me feel uncomfortable and I would be thinking in my head, stop looking at me, kid, stop looking at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the nurses on the ward I worked would say, yeah, that, that child waits for you, that child watches for you to come in. And That's my head. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't... I, and then, you know, it kind of crossed my mind because I was like, I'm, you know, that was, wasn't why I went to medical school. I went to medical school so I could help more people and do more. And, you know, yeah, there was a bit, of course, that I wanted to do for myself, like the traveling and sort of that kind of thing and the further training. But then it sort of dawned on me that, like, nothing really changes in terms of, like, now I have the opportunity to, like, really transform somebody's life. Yeah. And to... to yeah, to, to genuinely give one person an entire life and not just kind of maybe drift in and out of other people's lives in times of trauma or whatever. And and when I started to think of it like that, I don't know, it just felt a bit more worthwhile Yeah. to, to me. Because, yeah, I mean, it's still, like, it still had to be something that I found a reason for doing, not just, like, something that I felt some sort of cosmic responsibility to do. Yeah. I still needed to kind of buy into it even now and that way sort of made sense and yeah because you need to like sort of feed like the sort of rationale behind like even though if, if it like was like a, a yeah, bigger sort of like set in stone kind of thing but it's still like 
yeah to you're talking about like being that sort of like logical human mind of yeah 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 so i that was when i started to seriously look at um the possibility of adoption and you have to foster for a couple of years and shit like that and but i just started a job in anesthetics and everything was a bit full on and um it it could you know it was complicated like we end up, I ended up having to get like child lines South Africa sort of got on board because it wasn't straightforward and the social workers didn't w- it was just like everything was being blocked along yeah. the way and you know it just became insanely difficult and once I'd made the decision I wasn't going to walk away but it took a lot of fighting and then you know I eventually got a court date for the foster care and nobody thought it would go through nobody thought that the court would rule in yeah. my favour, but we, you know, we got the only non-black judge in that region on that day, which is weird. And yeah, then I ended up, you know, forty-eight hours later, I I had a kid. That is mad. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Did you go to McDonald's? <laughs> it's the first thing you <laughs> no, do when you get a kid. I was isn't on it? call. I was. I had a twenty-four hour call, so oh I came mad. out of court and like you know went back to work, and then I had a twenty-four hour call the next day. Yeah. And then I, you know, I didn't have any childcare. I couldn't take time off work because it was a fairly new job. So I had to like phone my mum and be like, do you remember that kid that my mum had met her? She'd been over to South Africa and say so hi she knew. Yeah. She'd say hi to your mum. Hi, mum. Hi, thanks. Hi, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for dropping everything and coming over to South Africa. <laughs> but yeah. But um, so she, I was like, can you come to South Africa? Because like, I got the foster car. And she was like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? And she was like, when? And I was like, a couple of days. Yeah. So she did. Fair play to my mum. Really Fair play. Cool. Yeah. Because she, you know, wouldn't always have done things like that. So she, yeah, she walked up over to South That's Africa. Massive. And, um, That's cool. Yeah. I sort of had a child all of a sudden. And yeah. She came with a lot of health issues and problems. And what, what was the, f- like, so whenever you did sleep, because you don't sleep when you're a doctor who is attracted to or war torn areas so like inevitably you're going to end up like i mean a doctor who is on 48 hour calls so when you did anyway eventually get the well-deserved slumber from the work like what was when you woke up like because when i wait they know when you like goes to a hotel or something you used to sleep it in your bed and then uh you might go to a hotel or an airbnb for whatever special occasion a bit of a like uh, exclusive rendezvous whatever's happening but like you go somewhere different and you stay in a d- different bed and you wake up the next morning and y- you like forget that you went to sleep <laughs> there so like what was it like when you woke up like and were like oh like was it did you forget like that there was a kid in the house i still there? forget what are you talking about yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, what? who's that i thought there was a kid in there and then i remember yeah I t- <laughs> yes there is yeah um yeah it was really weird i mean probably not as weird as i thought it would be because i was still you know, I was quite committed to my job and, you know... You I said I like a focus. Yeah, like it didn't really... It, not as much as I thought it would. Yeah. It just became like this thing, like, okay, like, this is what I do now and, you know, she's here too. And and then, you know, in South Africa, like, it, most people have living childcare and stuff. That's kind of how it works. Um, What's, l- like, living child... Or, like, to pay for, like, a... Yeah, so, like, you'd have a nanny and stuff, and because, I, you know, it was only me and my daughter, and then, like, you're working mental hours and everything, so, you know, yeah. it was... Then I had to contend with, like, that person living in my house, and just, yeah, it was freaking mad. mad. But, like, I... I probably adapted in, uh, in like, it took me a few years to sort of register what I'd done, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um... So yeah, then I I carried on working in anaesthetics. I got another qualification in anaesthetics, and um, so for how how long? How many years then? After, um, so I got the foster care in November two thousand and eleven, and then you there you only have a two year period of foster care, um, and then it either has to be renewed in the courts or you go for adoption. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. um. I knew that adoption was going to be difficult because it was going to face the same barriers, if not more, than I did with the foster care. And my mum had been diagnosed with cancer in the UK in 2012. And I just, you know, I did I did wonder about continuing with the adoption. Yeah. And there is that I seriously thought about finding alternative care. And, you know, I did... 
Yeah, it's a weird thing to say now, actually, but like I did look at certainly one option seriously, but it just it was just it just felt fucking it's wrong when I it was just, I it was just wrong. Yeah, yeah. And Wait, what felt wrong like? Just like I, I look, you know, there's some like better charitable organisations. So when I got the foster care, my mum got unwell, and yeah, I just felt really fucking overwhelming because you know, it's just like, what if I can't get the adoption? And you know, so it just gives you a whole different perspective if you start to think about what if you do have to move home and and shit like that, and yeah, and if you have to do it quickly. And then I was like, fuck, and everyone was telling me you're never going to get the adoption, and um. Yeah. And so there was a, a a charity that you know cared for kids that like in her situation, and it you know on paper it looked really good. And I I I don't know. I hadn't had much sleep, and I went there just to look at it. And I I took my daughter with me just to look, and I just had the weirdest fucking. Sen- it just just the whole thing was wrong. I just I, I was there for about. Not even five minutes, and I just I thought I was gonna vomit, and it just the whole idea of yeah of doing it just I couldn't. It was just wrong. Yeah, you know, and it was probably at that point where I kind of thought, okay, this is actually my kid. <laughs> yeah, like this is actually my kid, and okay, this is it. This is me and her now. Kind yeah, because not that it hadn't at times, you know, like I, she was my kid. Like I didn't, I mm. already you know, had bought into the whole parenting thing and, you know, um, but and there's, like, there's a lot of parts of us to like, let go of like, to, you know, like the, you're back and forth in your head, like that dialogue of like, should you like, what, it, you know, it's too late. Like what if you can, you know, get someone else to take or something like that. Like that's, you know, always like a, ma- ma- like a sort of like a catalyst for our life like that. Like it's always going to be, um, the old sort of self, like that, still has elements. Like sort of, that's where the debate is coming from. And the only way, like, for that debate to stop is nearly like a letting go of that. And there's bits of it, like, always will come up. But like, yeah, it's a weird thing to like have to do or whatever. Like, yeah, and I, I think because I was working so hard in my job, and like, I really enjoyed the job. And yeah, there was still a. So I think it was always there, but a little bit in the back of my head. What if I could make the whole thing work and still do what I wanted to do? And you know, I, yeah, that I sort of, I'm not sure I made peace then, but like I, I did kind of commit to another path a little bit more, if not more completely. Yeah. So that then I knew I had to go for the adoption and that was a whole other fucking, yeah, you know, shit storm. But, um, yeah, I did that. And then while that was sort of in process, other things happened in South Africa that sort of made me feel like, yeah, this might not, you know, if you if you're a non-black person adopting a black child and trying to to live that way, you know, there's a lot of difficulty for mm. a black kid with a white parent. Yeah, you know that it's not d- they can sort of feel like they're living in between and that they're being ostracized by their own communities and stuff like that. And it's not, I don't know, I didn't think it was going to be the best situation for her. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd started to look at leaving. Yeah, the violence was just getting worse and worse and worse. And um, then you, so like after, yeah, so like, yeah, sorry, go on. Like yeah, just I, s- I think that th- one of the final things really there was, was we got hijacked, um, her and I in the car by two guys and and. That was just a whole other level of crazy that I wasn't. Yeah, I mean you see violence all the time, but you don't really think it's going to happen to you. Because it was with hijacked with like guns and. Yeah, so I was picking her up after work. Um, my daughter uh, from the childminder's house on like you know five o'clock on a Sunday evening, and we were just yeah we were driving off the property, not like a fucking fancy place or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah, two guys with guns ran in through the gate and. Um. Yeah, held the gun up my head, and um, you know, we've seen a few cases in the hospital where, like, like the kid ends up being taken in the car. Uh, you know, they drive off with the car and the kid and yeah. everything, and there's yeah. you know things, reasons why they they would do that. But like, I you know, yeah. So that was quite 
Yeah. It wasn't the best day. No. <laughs> well, um, I'd um, rather have been in Afghanistan. <laughs> Afghan- uh, do you know the place? The Green Storm. Af- what's it called? Yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah, why no? Oh, it oh man, yeah. I can't pronounce Grinch it. I'm town. sorry. Grinchtown. Afghanistan. How can, how can Dusseldorf. No, uh, you, can know the, you know the country I'm trying to say. Afghanistan. I don't know. Uzbekistan. I don't it's know. It's a famous country. You're messing with me. Af- Afghanistan. Af- Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. The Grinch isn't from Afghanistan. No, no he's not from <laughs> Afghanistan. I'm, I'm just saying, can you help me pronounce the word? Like, Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Afghanistan. Yeah, Afghanistan. Oh man, I can't pronounce the word, but yeah, that country. <laughs> you were you were at you yeah, I'm saying you, you would have had more fun being there with bouncing Betty's than getting hijacked. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, I think I would. Yeah, it wasn't a good experience and you know, I think I just thought then I was just like, Oh, you know what, this is this is probably a message, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, exit stage right <laughs> from that point. So um yeah, I I it was and taking a lot to sort of focus on the adoption, so I changed jobs so I could reduce my working hours a little bit. Yeah, so you... So you... What? Like, so you went to uh, South Africa and, yeah, did your, uh, like, anaesthetics there, and then, yeah, after the adop- in the adopted your kid, and then after the adoption, um, yeah, that thing happened at a hijack, and even though you'd already been thinking about leaving, like, so what, like, happened then? You just went back to England... No, so um, the adoption turned out to be quite a fight, and um, then I was, you know, I was just sort of knackered and burned out and everything. Yeah. And um, a few weeks, be- my plan was to like go back to the UK for like a few months and just kind of like, you know, let my daughter get to know my family and things like that, and for me to just kind of like fucking sort my shit out and, yeah. you know, get a bit of a break in that from everything. And, um, uh, a few weeks before we were due to go to the UK, um, her visa got declined, like even a visitor's visa. So they said that um, she, because now she'd been adopted by a UK national, the UK doesn't confer nationality automatically when you adopt. Yeah. Which is something I was aware of. Um, but she got declined even a visitor's visa just yeah. to go on holiday, just to, to stay for a few months in the country. And they said that now she'd been adopted by a UK national, they didn't believe that she'd abide by the terms on any visa and exit the country. Because she no longer had ties to South Africa, even though she holds a South African passport and she's a South African national. Yeah, that's weird. So I couldn't, then I couldn't go home. Um, and I still wanted to be a bit closer to my mum and things like that. So I was already registered to practice medicine in Ireland like to work as a doctor in Ireland from about 2012. Yeah. And I just thought, fuck it, like it's the nearest place to go. And, you know, it's a little bit more sort of chilled. And so like with a few weeks notice, we yeah changed plans and came here. Fra- France is a big, France is a big, like France is close enough, but they, they have the thing with the baguettes and stuff, don't they? Yeah, yeah. and the French language and stuff. Oh, like that, that would, yeah, yeah, that would be the main thing. Yeah. Uh, Betty Falou. So then you uh, went to uh, Ireland instead. <laughs> yeah, so we came here like like a pair of refugees with kind of like nothing and no plans and no yeah not anything and um, ended up in La Hinch randomly. Um, La Hinch, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the place to go. Yeah, even the Grinch would not go to La Hinch in the middle of fucking winter when you've been. Th- in South Africa, by the Indian Ocean, in the middle of summer, you come straight to the Atlantic in yeah. the fucking winter, and you get belted with crystals of salt from the hard yeah. rocks. Right? Yeah, Did you live nice. in a little stone hut in the Hinch? Felt like it compared yeah. to where I'd been in South Africa with the heat and the fucking yeah. I mean, it was mad, and and we came like the year that we came, the weather was fucking dreadful. Yeah, um, which <laughs> what, like, is it, why you, like it wasn't going to be a year like where you came and it was going to be good <laughs> it's like the year i came the weather was bad yeah <laughs> like, no, like it, it, all like storms had really trashed everything yeah was that storm or orifices or it's not orifices um storm ophelia and stuff no like this that. is like d- january 2014 i don't know what kind of storm it was that it hit, like but i mean oh, like okay yeah, the yeah. first like month or so that we were here it was, it was bad dreadful. shit that time yeah so um yeah then i had to kind of you know register like the adoption and stuff here because you so like the reason we were allowed in here you know i'm a uk national and um south africans don't need visas to come in here and she was also recognized as my dependent by ireland so yeah like that wasn't a problem um but yeah you know sort of getting her health stuff registered getting the adoption registered here and um getting a job and everything like that 
um, yeah, it was a bit mad. So we've been here ever since. Still can't go home to visit. Yeah. Um, because that's still not sorted. I got a job. I ended up, I couldn't carry on in anaesthetics because of childcare and cost of it and things like that and just the organising of it. So I ended up randomly getting offered a job in psychiatry. Yeah. And so I've been working in mental health in, in Ireland. Ireland ever since. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of, so how many years now has that been since working? Maybe seven years in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Seven years doing mental health and yeah, still no, and the visa stuff hasn't still come through. No, so like I, we got nowhere kind of taking it to the home office and stuff, and it cost, you know. Can I, can I, can I, say, yeah, like just like try and like simply explain, like in just like, <laughs> like just words like that. Like you're like, yeah, because of the visa, like you have like been stuck here. Yeah, basically. Not, I mean, the, the you know, the UK government were very clear to say, I am not stuck here. I am yeah. free to go, but like, you can't go with Yeah, it's kid. like, well, what do I do about my kid? You know, leave her with a. Like she, she's stuck in Ireland. Yeah, so it's like, well, yeah, what do you do? Le- leave her with a fucking bowl of food and a cat flap? I mean, come on, like, no, yeah. So, um, if I if I need to get a break and things like that, then um, my mum, who's now in her early seventies, has to come over here, um, and then I can get some kind of break. Um, Which right now isn't exactly easy either. For no, her. she can't come over. No, it's ridiculous. Like she hadn't seen my daughter for a year, more than a year. Um, so we kind of approached the home office a few times and looked at things like that and kind of got solicitors and, and, and it was just a big fat fucking no. Yeah. Um, and people passing the buck and, and stuff like that. And then, um, I just decided, you know, I'd been here by then about three and a half years before I sort of kind of went, this is going nowhere. So I, um, I, after five years, I applied for Irish citizenship, which I got last March. So you're Irish. I'm Irish. Yeah, you can, can you not te- tell by your accent. Yeah, of course. Yeah, not. you have a kind of <laughs> Lahinch accent. You can tell. You can tell. You you t- you can tell you've been in Lahinch. Yeah, you can. But like you know, you listen closely. You can tell she's been to Lahinch. <laughs> uh, I've only got a, a Port Leash accent by now. Yeah. Yeah, that'll you be d- it. <laughs> it's the most Port Leash accent. Um, <laughs> so that yeah, I. I became Irish last March and I submitted all of her paperwork and then fucking COVID happened and yeah. we haven't gone any further. I mean, now by now she should have the citizenship and the passport. So we'd be able to like come and go and visit home and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that's not the case. And we sort of don't know when that will be now because apparently COVID is the great excuse for everybody doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so everything's going to a halt for an unknown period of time and, you know, still... Know, yeah, life is impacted in the way that it is. So, yeah. yeah. Now you're here doing podcasts. Yeah, that's where you're at now. Who did yeah. I? Did you, yeah, doing podcasts in a war zone. In oh a no war. way. <laughs> 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 it's ha- it's it's hard to do podcasts in a war zone. I'd say like so. It's a. I'd say it presents greater challenges than we have right now with our our fancy cups of tea and our fancy equipment. It's just more like the audio kind of intricacies behind like explosions and gunshots and yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah. would be a nuisance yeah. for lack of better verbiage. Uh, it's not really verbiage, but <laughs> um, yeah, so now you're doing podcasts. Yeah, and yeah, mental health and podcasts and parenting. It's the last fucking place I thought I'd be. In here. <laughs> yeah, here are doing, doing all things. of that. Yeah. You like doing podcasts. <laughs> mm. uh, I'm getting used to doing podcasts. Yeah, yeah. I'd say yeah. It's a bit weird, like talking about all of this shit on it. And of course, you know. yeah. It's def- it's always going to be like weirder. So this is going to be like definitely like like, like you're going to be really good like uh like host uh, like after this you are anyway. But like just because like it is like you know even like Stevie doing that episode for him like it's mm. like um I did like a a podcast I mean, it was just on spotify for girl emma and um it's really different like being at the other side it's, it's yeah it's, it's different. really it's weird like, like it's you're a different person or something yeah like. i i think it's i find it a bit harder to be honest yeah like, I, I feel like i'm warming up to it now but like yeah I just, yeah i don't know it's like that kind of when when you work in mental health like you know i mean people see doctors a bit differently anyway i think for some mad reason but like i suppose psychiatry is like 
yeah, it, it's like you're sort of proving that psychiatrists are people too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, like everybody comes with their own story. And so you're the first, I- is he the first Irish psychiatrist on YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. I'd, I'd like to think not. But no, you know. pr- probably not. Um, it's, it, um, yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, but like it is, it, it's going to like heighten your, your abilities to talk and sort of like uh, put yourself in the shoes of the guests or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like definitely. Yeah. yeah, so that's um, good. And what I'm looking forward to too is just like you know we we can never like and explain. And that's the whole like reason. The whole reason you're like yeah a host is because we could never explain in like this podcast like the array of medical knowledge. Uh, like yeah, you have is insane. Like and it's it's really impressive. Or whatever and yeah, and it's all to do with your 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 addiction. You know your junky tendency tendencies towards <laughs> textbooks towards i was a bit re- worried when you said addiction there <laughs> yeah it's re- a reading addiction and it's it's uh yeah it's affecting you and everyone else around you <laughs> and this is your intervention for reading books it's uh, very damaging yeah put the um, books down there yeah, yeah but you're you're doing good at the book reading fair play um <laughs> really in Kevin. no matter um yeah like so what's i don't know like why why i suppose when we met like it was like with crohig and stuff like you were mm. you were on an episode actually what am i saying why didn't i say that actually we did an episode with you before but it's private or whatever because yeah that was a fucking lifetime ago wasn't it really yeah maybe like a year ago yeah, but a bit of a lifetime time, yeah. <laughs> it's a lifetime if you're a one-year-old um what was i gonna say <laughs> but yeah we forgot about that like and uh that's how we met or whatever it was suggested for that but obviously like it was sort of set in stone as well for us to meet like and yeah to sort of like become like uh well yeah i would say work work people what's the word like colleagues colleagues yeah but associates. Not really associates associates of the spiral um <laughs> <laughs> associates of the spiral but yeah but now and now now we're friends now and stuff and that's c- cool and like um yeah and we're we're all getting w- on but like what where is it going with that like fucking why yeah like i just wanted to explain sort of like i, I don't know crohig or whatever like what like i don't know it's what we can't explain crohig it's too hard like right now and we're trying yeah. and um but what was the set but like yeah like why why are you doing this podcast do you know what i mean why why are you why are you here why, why, why are you well, here in your house that's an intense question <laughs> Um, well, that why you he- like we, yeah actually I'm not going to say anything. Else. Well, there was so limited maybe. rental properties in Port Leash when I came to live here. No, that's <laughs> like a very practical answer. <laughs> I okay. I mean, I suppose I guess my my kind of stuff when I started working in mental health was like it wasn't really anything that I had thought I would end up in, and I think my own experiences along the way probably gave me a bit of a different take on it, and probably a bit more of a sort of. I think I bought a lot I ended up bringing a lot of personal experience to the job and stuff that's happened since with you know like my daughter's got sort of a number of physical and developmental needs that probably I didn't I don't think anybody could have anticipated but that's been a bit of a learning curve as well and I I didn't realize what I sort of brought to the table before from before I did medicine because I'd done other things and that like most people who go to med school later you know, you've got a whole other lifetime of experience and studies and things yeah. like that that I brought to it. So I'd already, yeah, I'd already got like a a, a BA, a BA honors and a master's degree. <laughs> I came to this is making me sound. Like it, it doesn't weird. because <laughs> because you're gonna say because no one like yeah people um, won't most people listen won't really like no but like but I, that's massive like yeah like yeah I got like I you know I gone I done arts before i did Medi- science before i did medicine yeah so i i yeah i'd got arts based degrees and a master's in yeah cultural theory and education yeah. and stuff and i'd worked as a teacher in south korea and i you know i'd been all over the place doing all sorts of things and yeah you know i but i was you've able had to had your fair that. share of voyages around the world yeah um and it just i felt like i I was able to draw on a lot of that, you know, mental health doesn't have that many resources in Ireland, it wasn't really prepared for the onslaught of what's happened in the last 10 years or so, I don't think, yeah. and, um, and I, it was great that I could, it, it was like a lifeline for me to be able to draw on those past experiences and sort of yeah, ongoing yeah. experiences and studies and shit like that, and I just, 
it really helped with bringing for me practicing a much broader approach to my patients yeah yeah um and then i you know i've gone on and done more study in like functional medicine and health and wellness coaching and stuff since i've been doing mental health yeah so what my my perspective my view of how i would work just brings in it brings in a lot of kind of lifestyle stuff and a lot of kind of what we call sort of psychosocial things that people can be doing for themselves and it looks at like yeah the broader community involvement and kind of prevention and not sort of like longevity within the change opposed to like pr- temporary yeah. solutions and to prevention like you know yeah. a lot around prevention and rather than how do we get change. this patient out here for the day like yeah like and just sort of firefighting and waiting until people get sick and then yeah yeah you know, it just it's not effective we can't manage that anymore no you know there's not as, there's as we're seeing definitely this year and yeah every i think yeah it's not to I'm not at all belittling because there's people that I work with that work really fucking hard and like it's just But it's never it's never it's never any individual's fault within like working like you can't blame like anyone for even bad like because they just haven't like it's it's this like system itself just isn't set up for No. And there's no individual involved even in the creation of the system. It's yeah. like there w- it was like a collective creation of a system over time and there's loads yeah. of things at play but now it's just time for that shit to change and everyone yeah, can yeah and see it's just that. Y- i think the what my headache and my issue is that it's taken too long for people to realize that it needs to change you know yeah. and people working in it on the ground will tell you every day oh my god this is it's becoming ridiculous it's becoming unmanageable but the system is too slow to acknowledge but and it's accept it and, and but the problem lies in people expecting the system to change rather than and forgetting that the system isn't a thing outside of humans. Do you know what I mean? It's not mm. like this sort of ro- like do you, you, it's us who create the system. It's not like when government can. It's not like that. Like it's us who affect who are the system, create the system, are whatever. Like um, we can't wait for and it's sort of when people complain about the council and stuff. I get it. Like you're yeah. working, you're paying for taxes and stuff, but like. You know, at the end of the day, like, we are in a loop of get these council people getting in and blah, 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 not fixing yeah, the yeah. potholes, blah, 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 loops, loops, and history repeats itself. But the only reason, like, history repeats itself is because people keep saying history repeats itself and they're expecting everyone else to do it. And that's not to put any responsibility on anyone. It's like, but I do believe, like, now is the time. It's just like, a builder and they will come. And I think, like, you know, it's just, it's, I definitely don't, like, condemn anyone for, like, you know, not want, like, to change or whatever. Who cares? Like, do what you want to do. Like, um, just live your life or whatever. But, like, um, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, I, I just think it's... Some people are given, like, the experiences and everything and knowledge. Experiences, knowledge, and uh, sort of connections are the tr- trifecta for me. And you have those three things and you utilize those three things. You can make massive changes in the world. Like, and, yeah, some people, like, you know, and... and uh, that's what we can do together and like with you and like there's a collective of us coming around mm. and then there's collectives in other parts of the country and or other parts of the world and you know it, it happens it changes happen and it's hard to see when everyone's looking on facebook all the time and they're seeing the yeah. same shit reshared from it's like yeah like you know I, but there is change definitely happening and hopefully like yeah you will be able to help make some great like positive change within the mental health system because you are very compassionate about it and you have a very like sort of balanced opinion about it. like when it comes to east and west and just everything like you're so insanely balanced and like i think people that work with you like know that like i'd assume they'd know that if they've gotten to work with you and i think to describe the way like you work is the way Haley works is it, it works like just you know what I mean? Like you, you work. Thanks. That's, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. That's, good. That's quote. That's the, my greatest quote ever. She works in a way that works. <laughs> but that's the thing is like the word is works. It's like sometimes people work in a way that doesn't work. How can you work in a way that doesn't work? Yeah. And you're not really working, are you? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> it, but like it's just weird connotations. Um, sorry to get derailed by all that. Um, but like Oscar is here. Hi, Oscar. Um. So, like, yeah, when, so, like, I suppose, I want to definitely explain, like, yeah, like, it's not just, like, and, you know, a lot of these stories will come out in other podcasts and stuff, like, when you'll be able to relate to other guests, but, like, like, why I was really excited, like, yeah, over time to, like, learn, like, you remind me of one of the only few people, like, like, sort of, like, you took a very Greek, uh, (laughs) Greek, like, old school philosopher type of learning, like, you proper went and voyaged around the world, 
and traveled and taught in like South Korea and did all this traveling and learning and stuff and then came back and you attained all this knowledge from from the seven seas and and then you returned uh to the to the good old land of England like back back to mainland Europe and you uh yeah went to medical school and did all those years in and in South Africa and all that and I think anyway it's like you have now the trifecta of an insane amount of knowledge an insane amount of experience and now it is the beginning of the insane amount of connections needed when you have those three things that's the formula to change and yeah i'm really excited that like yeah we were, we're going to be working together on all this shit because i don't know i can't literally cannot explain like you could never explain to the people like how much you know it just it'll happen over time and people will the more they see in podcasts be like whoa what the hell she knows all that you're also really silly as well <laughs> <laughs> so that's the mad part <laughs> yeah it's a, yeah it's a weird combination yeah. um i don't it's know i mean i kind of always feel like the learning is never enough because it's always changing and that you know the field is always growing and stuff like yeah. that and i find my own little personal interests within it and more things that sort of come together to make sense but yeah like i you know i i think that i the bottom line of it is like before you can bring all those things together and help people like you need to to have a feeling for where somebody's at and you need to love a good story and i love a good story yeah i, I know love you a do good story. i know you do um i do too not not in that way though and <laughs> not the kind of stories that you. No, I just meant like I love a good sitting by the fire kind of story. <laughs> the look in your eyes is something. Different. A telling of tale. <laughs> Tell me a tale, my um, dear one, as we sit by the fire, roasting marshmallows and unicorn horns. Y- yeah. Whoa. That went somewhere else. <laughs> Wasn't me. No. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. Is that why I'm on? Am I actually doing a psychiatric evaluation here? Yeah, I think that I'm actually I'm maybe one of your patients, and that that you've like actually bought me all this equipment <laughs> <laughs> and to get the real story. That we didn't like get any of the equipment from all the places I thought we got it from, and all the money we gained, and you're actually this has all been funded by by the HSC to make me feel like <laughs> to make me feel okay thanks to the HSC <laughs> the HSC oh, have sponsored this podcast <laughs> there, there, there is not the amount of equipment and fucking money in the HSC to make you feel all right i'm telling oh. you <laughs> so, <laughs> no, not in a bad way oh okay in, in a nice way <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel a bit bad now sorry man no thanks to you see from <laughs> there's no one even watching it you, youtube youtube are putting on fake views to make me feel okay <laughs> there's yeah. like like literally youtube and hsc yeah. are working together and they're paying everyone to make Do you know, <laughs> did you ever see the truman show <laughs> exactly yeah 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 i know not really i have a great sense of self thanks for asking yeah great. Um, <laughs> i haven't played on your sense of paranoia too much there no no, no. excellent <laughs> no I, I i have a i'm fairly grounded now i have my, my I'm, I'm in my bare feet i'm not but that would be <laughs> in your socks aren't you yeah anyways sorry to get so caught up in uh in, my, in you my lack of individualization <laughs> um yeah what i was gonna say yeah so yeah, so you were saying about like, sorry, you were saying about not uh, that the knowledge isn't enough because knowledge is always changing. Yeah, so like, it, I mean, it's just all, it's a kind of really dynamic thing. And just like I, my perspective has always been to integrate the, the whatever's around and whatever's available. You've got to be smart with what you've got. And I think that, you know, the, like the, the lovely thing about Craig was like coming across that whole sort of, ethos and vibe of that was like it's it's utilizing what's around in the community yeah. and, and working in conjunction with yeah other things other bodies other organizations and that that makes so much sense to me like that really fucking appeals to me because there's no other way to do it because yeah. if you, you can you know healthcare can address the level of the individual and we can look at that from a cellular level through to organ systems and whole whole people to to then to the people to then to the yeah to then like groups of people and communities and societies yeah. in the whole yeah. fucking country and we're really lucky here in Ireland that like you know the population is pretty small and the geographical region is pretty small and it kind of I've often sort of joked a little bit about it being like a really big classroom <laughs> you yeah. know that if if you can you know share all of that stuff and use everything that you've got we don't have any kind of like horrific sort of 
social circumstances or barriers like you might in parts of Africa and that kind of thing in the yeah. way like you know we're really well set up here to use what we've got and to be kind of really resourceful and to sort of share information and you know to have people working together with the skills that they've got to grow the skills and knowledge and insight of other people yeah you know and that's proper healthcare to me that's like whole health whole person wellness yeah you know and it starts from the cell and the same the same shit is applied all the way up the same principles are there yeah def- definitely just want, like t- touching on that thing with the cell like to like that is my biggest thing as well it's just like i remember a friend like making a joke <laughs> about like crying or whatever and saying like I was trying to explain how it could change, and he's like, no, like, because he's talking about doing, like, these big, like, big, massive world changing things or whatever, and, like, and I believe in him, and he will do it and stuff, and but that kind of thing just takes a lot longer, but he couldn't sort of, I, I didn't feel like he could feel the, the sort of purpose in making change in the communities, and I think that's actually why there's, like, a lot wrong with the world, because there's, millions of people out there right now with good intentions like and you know protest i'm not saying like do protest whatever you want do whatever you want to like it's whatever what i'm saying is the change like does not happen from the world you, you do not change the world first because we are the perceivers of the world like we're not i'm not saying humans are the only thing here but we are the perceivers of the world like you can i seen a picture the other day that was like uh i like a world without bees and it was like armageddon looking world and it was like a world without fucking plants or what was that Armageddon looking picture and it was a world without humans and it was this beautiful <laughs> green landscape and it's like that's not true because who would have took that photo no yeah. one like so then it's just like do you know what yes the green grass could be there like I'm not like and I and I get what people are saying but but like we are the ones to perceive the beauty like you need without us like who's going to perceive that beauty like animals are in it and it's like I think that separates us is our uh, level of consciousness and you know I'm not saying like animals are conscious everything, but like we do have I don't know what the word is, but whatever. Anyway, like so what I'm saying is it, like I always like kinda when I see that shit, I'm like, nah, that's not I don't think that for me that doesn't feel right. Like it's like it has to change within. And that's not like a spiritual thing. Like I'm talking like I, I even like I, I think it can be a spiritual thing, and it is for me, but but I think for everyone, like it's it's on a cellular level. The change happens to within. The singularity for all massive change will have had been a cell to the core, whether it was like, 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 like the singularity. And people are afraid of like robots coming self-aware, and a singularity is like the point of where like the sort of pendulum turns and like it gets to that sort of stop to then become the singularity of like robots coming self-aware, and then there's like change, and like that's the fear. Or a better example is like Elon Musk is perceived as a guy that's changing the world. That man was once a cell, like he was the cell that like do 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 to do this, and then he what? Then he worked, and he he built connections, and he gained experience and knowledge, and do 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 do, and then he made the change in the world. You cannot just like, you cannot just be like, I'm going to change the world, and I'm going to share all this stuff that's already been done. You need to really go within and to find your sense of self, and then to find the sense of self uh, when you are connected and reflected by others. And, like, it's all this sort of... And that's why people that do change the world, and that's what the people there in the history books is because they found that sense of self first. You need it. You need that sense of self first before you can make massive change. Otherwise, you're shouting from the void into the void, and nothing happens. And I think that's the biggest problem in the world. So I think it's really cool, yeah, like, what you're talking about, how the cell need Like, change starts at the cell. It starts with the individual, like... Try and make change in your family first, like, and I know everyone's situation is different and stuff, and that's okay. But do what you can, like, and for for your family and friends, and and just see if you can do that and how that makes you feel trying to do it and stuff. And then, you know, over time, that's all you need to do. We do not need the pressure of fucking saving seven billion people. Like, just save one person. If everyone does that, like, it's gonna be fine. Like what you did for your your kid, like, and everything would literally be fine. Like, it's like mm-hmm. it's two plus two is four. Like, I think it is. is easier than we make it out to be like yeah i think it is and you take it in kind of smaller pieces and that was yeah i got shit i know that from personal experience myself yeah you know that like when if you sit at the bottom of a pit of like overwhelm then you can't you're paralyzed by it yeah you know? yeah and it's like it is when you break things down day by day and and area by area and that's you know that's 
a lot of that kind of thing. That's really simple stuff. That's not like managing mental health. That's just like giving people practical strategies to manage their own mental health and physical health and things like that. Yeah. You know, and it's really simple stuff that we've lost sight of, but it is. It's taking things thing by thing, step by yeah. step, day by day, you know, and that that gets you step by step will win you the fucking race eventually. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it is once you have your own sense of self and sense of identity you're very likely have found some level of your own purpose yeah you know everything is a lot less work when you're sort of rolling with your own purpose yeah <laughs> you're not resisting and you're not battling and you're like you're in some kind of like alignment with with your shit yeah and that's a that that's how good things start to come from that because you yeah. can sort of relax into that so teaching people about how to kind of connect with that and be a bit more aware of that that to me is all part of good mental health yeah it's not about just prescribing a medication or like and telling people to come back for the next appointment and you know yeah because it's an, a fucking it's this downward spiral or not it's downward just, it's spiral a cy- it's a you know, cycle it's just it's yeah a it's a time. repetitive cycle yeah. it's like a revolving door yeah you know you need to to give people practical strategies and you know to, to be like to be fair to the, the system as well, people do need to maybe step up and meet us halfway at least. Yeah. It's not just about what, what the system can do for people. That you know, there's yeah. also a lot of responsibility that we all carry for our own health and wellness and well being and functionality and so Yeah. Because it's the whole it's that saying like you can give a horse a fish, but the horse has to eat the fish. Exactly that. Yeah, I can't <laughs> tell you how many times in a day I say that to people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's the whole, like, yeah, you lead a fish to water. Like Alan mm-hmm. said on our podcast, two podcasts ago, Alan said that really yeah. cool thing. Check out the episode, Alan Duarte. He said, like, you know, he because he looked around and he looked out the back and was like, he seen the wall out the back and he's like, like, you can want to, g- uh, like, you can help someone get over that wall. But if they do not want to get, like, if they do not, like, not if they don't want to, but if they, they can want to get over the wall, but if they do not, like, let you help them get over the wall and how you how you, it's not possible like it's no not it's a combination of like wanting to and accepting the help it's there yeah you know but there's Which always going to be a level of personal responsibility 100 percent in it you know and yeah i think it's but we, we we're not i don't feel that we're effectively using what we've got in terms of like promoting long-term wellness and yeah sustained wellness and shit like that yeah. and that is where community stuff can come in yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like that's what we want to do at Crawhig because like when you said that thing about like when you're on your purpose and, and like the hard part then is like, you know, because like we've had the conversations before because what's, what's missing from a lot of these podcasts when people say you need your purpose and stuff, they don't necessarily explain like how to find your purpose because that's a fucking, <laughs> that's like the, that's like the age old question. Why am I here? Like why, whatever. Like I would say like, first of all, like for anyone like doesn't have a purpose and not sure what it is, like begin to be open to having one and 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 being open and it doesn't have to be sort of a spiritual thing but just be open to the idea that there's a there's a way of life that's right for you and that that like it's not just because you're a certain age or a certain point or have done x y and z for so many years it doesn't mean it's like it doesn't mean it's fucking over yeah by that point it doesn't uh, you know at any point it's crazy if you like that yeah people like have been made can, feel like that like. yeah you can change and you can do different things and it might not feel easy like you know it doesn't feel easy you know but what's your option sometimes yeah yeah you know you can't and i think i you know my myself i kind of stayed stuck in things even since that you know in, during my time in ireland that like i you know, you start to believe that this is all it is and this is yeah. what you've got to sort of resign yourself to. And Because you when know, you're in it, it's hard to see out of it. Like It's sometimes. really hard to see out of it. And you doubt your own mind in thinking that this isn't right or that you could do something different and people tell you that you can't. And like, you know, ultimately it's up to you what you want to believe in. And it's up to you, you know, is within your power even when it doesn't, you know, I've been a single parent of a kid with multiple problems living by myself in a country that, yeah, you know, like I, I think I joked before the other day about being a victim of drift. A victim of drift, yeah, that's really you funny. Know, that's like Haley's official title, a victim Hayley of Wood, drift. victim of drift. Driftwood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, well, you can sort of Driftwood. feel... Driftwood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's your, nice. your nickname, your, your, your DJ name, DJ yeah. Driftwood. <laughs> <laughs> she's w- she's a wood and she drifts yeah i am drifting Vic- victim of drift victim of drift <laughs> that sounds <laughs> really dramatic <laughs> it, like well it was a dramatic drift. experience <laughs> like it actually sa- i think that sounds more fun than dramatic i think it's more of a fun sort of slogan or title um i just i victim d- of drift. yeah i mean i 
to be that whole kind of thing of like being a victim of like, oh, well, this happened and now I'm here and I'm stuck. And it's like, well, yeah, but you know, you do to, yeah. you still have all the basic tools. I have all of the tools that I used to have to, to change things for myself and to help change things for other people and yeah. shit like that. None of that grows legs and runs away from you. Yeah. So, yeah, even when things do kind of feel overwhelming, it's about stepping back and looking at your bigger picture and what you can still use and what you did want before and how you might be able to to bring that to now and all of that helps you form yeah. purpose. I feel like I've sort of got a bit disconnected and rambly now because this is no, no. It's something that I really... You're passionate about. Like, that's yeah, literally why I we're am. doing this podcast yeah, yeah. is to talk about this thing. Like, it's not... We haven't actually talked about it much. And, like, and I do want to clarify, like... Um, We'll finish up soon enough, but I definitely want to clarify like that. Uh, like it's a lot of stuff we're talking about, and then you go to our pages on Craig or Craig dot com. That's I don't think it's down at the moment. Oh shit, I've cut it. See, I've got to cut it. But yeah, you might go to our pages and be like, "What? The, what are they talking about?" Like, but like, and that was this was always the weird thing of uh, like, you know, Craig, we're known as banging on pieces of plastic in uh, the streets and stuff. But like, me and you have been sort of working on the building blocks and stuff like that and none of it's like out there yet and stuff and it will be soon um yeah we've been well, are we gonna blame covid no we're not blaming no oh. no no <laughs> jesus no i'm just we're we're blaming <laughs> fuck for that we're blaming the intricacies <laughs> and, and the power of it <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. like the the, the 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 density of the foundation of what this is yeah, is yeah. It's dense it's yeah. strong and it's um yeah you won't take it down with a hammer so you wouldn't anyway um but yeah, so a lot of that stuff will go out there. So if you look at our pages like and stuff and you're like, what are they on about? Like those lads bang on plastic in the park and Turles is like, no, nah, it'll, it'll, it'll all be out there soon and stuff. Our goal is to actually set up everything and become a platform that will, you know, allow, um, not, it will allow people to find their purpose uh, and yeah, so that we can promote three major aspects of healthy individuals and communities, healing creativity and uh, inspiration inspiration when you have those three things like everything does uh work out and stuff and uh yeah chronic means to create an irish i'm reading out like the hundreds of mission statements i've written over and over chronic means to cre- oh no like a ptsd work writing it so much but yeah anyway it'll all come to be naturally in some process and it'll all make sense and it'll all make sense what we're talking about and yeah, and like if anyone is listening this far, like you're the ones like that will I think be really involved for like this one because it's gonna go out soon. And yeah, if you're still listening, I just feel like you'll be really involved in early on because probably good supporters of us and stuff. But like, um, yeah, so shout out to you still listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is a point to it all. We no, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I meant like in our it heads, it's going somewhere anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, I did. Like a hundred percent is like, and we've. Uh, seen the approval like yeah and like yeah stevie and hugh and you know owen and there's a load of like good heads and like you know some that have like not been connected to right now but i uh, like yeah it'll all it'll all, it'll all uh, work out i think it'll all come out in the wash it'll all come out in the wash it'll yeah it'll be all right in the morning <laughs> yeah yeah the sun will rise tomorrow whether yeah. you like it or not <laughs> that's that yeah i posted something like that the other day like every Everything, everything will be fine, whether you like it or not. <laughs> whether you like it or not, it's all going to be okay. So <laughs> get over it. Some people don't want that, but whatever. No, they don't. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So should we finish up now? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on to your own podcast. Yeah, thanks. It was a really insightful conversation I had with you, Oscar. I w- what? Was that you? What was, wow. that? was that you talking? Yeah. Was it? I don't know. I'm confused now. He looks like a doctor. He looks like he's he's full of wisdom. As well, doesn't he? He's he looks f- like probably you should have been talking to him for the last hour or so. She is, he's a fine set of glutes, doesn't he? He does. I was looking at his ass for quite a while there because <laughs> oh I, yeah. I wasn't paying a lot of attention to you. <laughs> no, I <know. laughs> yeah, I was staring at Oscar's ass. Nice. It's a beauty. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Oscar, for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's nice. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on and I'm You're welcome. Thanks for the the weird experience. The weird experience. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't say it's that. been good. No. It's no. Yeah, we've some cool guests coming on in the f- uh coming on in the coming on. Uh coming on, coming on, coming on to a few guests. Um <laughs> sorry, it's just you only get to that time of talking. Do you yeah. always find you get like giddy like w- it's like do a podcast this long or something? 
Yeah, it does start to get a bit weird, especially when you've got the old earphones on. Yeah, like... It puts you, it transforms you to another place. Definitely, yeah. It's, al- it's yeah, always weird. a bit strange by this point. Yeah, yeah. Almost like I've been sniffing petrol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th- thanks for coming on and sharing your story and stuff, and it's really cool, and I'm sure loads of people will relate and... Uh, look forward to seeing what you do in the future and from here on now like it's the the one and only victim of drift it's it's <laughs> Haley Wood <laughs> oh that's nice man thanks I'm <laughs> uh, yeah thanks for watching and thanks for listening if you've listened all this way and not heard me at the start said a thing about spotify i'm sorry because now i'm going to say you could have listened to it on spotify if you didn't want to watch yeah. but now you know for next time it is on spotify and i did say it in the beginning and that's okay <laughs> but um i ah oh, i didn't cut it again oh man sorry anyway yeah thanks for watching and the episode is on spotify uh follows on spotify and uh, it'll appear closer to your feed and subscribe to us on youtube uh that actually genuinely really helps us out because yeah helps us um helps us uh yeah it just youtube help promotes stuff when we have more subscribers um so it's not just the numbers thing it's just like we do we do want <laughs> we, we do want people to watch this <laughs> um but yeah thanks for watching and uh do you want to say anything Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel slightly exposed now, but not in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? But like there yeah. was a time I felt a quick story for the folks at home before, but I was a time I felt really, really, really exposed. Oh, don't, don't tell that story. Maybe. Don't tell it. Is it the one I'm thinking of? It was. It inv- it, inv- it involved. <laughs> historical uh historical kind of piece of land uh mm. do, do you want to tell that story no no see you next week